Okay, we're going to start debugger today. It's our first VEX robotics assignment. At this point, you should have your test bed made. Don't worry about the claw motor. Just leave it in your box unplugged. We'll get to that later. Okay, it is very important, I will say this right away from the point, that you start reading directions. I know sometimes it's not the most fun thing to do. These directions, step by step, are how you're going to get through these assignments. Programming is very technical, meaning it's got directions with it. You need to read them. Okay, I'm going to walk you through the first uh, activity on this, but there are many, many things on this activity that you're going to end up going through, um, and you got to learn how to read directions, or else you're not going to be able to go through it. So, uh, we're going to get a couple things set up real quick before we get started. Uh, number one, go to your desktop, right click, go to new and folder, and go ahead and type in VEX programs, and just click off of it there. This is where we're going to save all of our files. Okay, uh, so next thing, it says you want to start up Robot C for VEX uh, robotic software. Okay, we're going to go ahead and find this icon and double click on it. And it'll have this thing pop up, but you can click on it and it'll go, go away. It'll also probably ask you to update. You don't want to download updates. We're just going to skip that. Um, I'm going to actually skip ahead here. It says open the PLTW template. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, basically, these first couple steps, I'm going to show you a different way. So what I want you to do is, number one thing, and go back to Robot C. Every time you go into this program, you're going to have to do this. And it kind of sucks, but it's a, a default option with uh, Robot C uh, that basically it's set up wrong every time we open it. you got to click Robot. Go to platform type. We don't have VEX IQ kits. Our kits are called VEX 2.0. And so if you just go down here, you'll see the VEX 2.0 Cortex. You've got to click that, or else it's not going to be able to communicate with our robots. Um, and you're also going to have to do it a second time and make sure natural language PLTW is selected. I know, I hope there's a fix for it soon. Unfortunately, that's life. We're going to have to deal with it. So every time you get in, you're going to have to go down here, click VEX 2.0 Cortex, and make sure natural language is selected. Bummer. I know. Okay? Uh, so from here, now, the next thing, we got to get this PLTW template, it's called. And we've never seen it before. We don't know where it is. So follow along with me. You're going to go to File, Open Sample Program. And if it doesn't say VEX2 up here right now, you're going to have to click back on the sample programs and then click VEX2. We want to go down to the PLTW folder and click PLTW template. All right. And we're going to give this thing a save. Uh, we're going to go to File, Save As. We just want this thing basically in our VEX programs folder that we made a second ago so it's easy to get at at any time. If you can't find your VEX programs folder on the sidebar here, just click on desktop and then find it. Mine is right here. And go ahead and save. Okay. So that's where we're at. Now we're going to actually get the file started. Uh, the third step says file save as and uh, select the folder that the teacher designated and save it as debugger. A weird thing with uh, programming, you always want to save before you begin programming. Um, weirdly enough, when we end up sending the programs to our robots, it overwrites everything and it just gets messy. So we're going to go ahead and right now so that we don't accidentally save over our PLTW template, we're going to go file save as, make sure you're still in your VEX programs folder, and we're going to call this debugger and give that a save. Sweet, we are rolling. Next, we need to get our motors and sensors set up. Okay, so we're going to click robot, go to motors and sensors setup, and we're going to add the motors and sensors as shown below, and then we're going to save our file again. Okay, so go to robot, go to motors and sensors setup, and basically on these tabs here, we're going to type in where things are plugged in. Okay, so if you scroll down, it actually shows you step by step. Click Robot, Motors and Sensors. We just did that. It says here we want to, in the Motors tab, type right motor and 
port 2 and left motor in port 3. The only difference here is under type, ours are VEX 393, I believe, or 363, whatever. Uh, ours are the 3-something motors instead of this 269, okay? So, we're going to go to motors. Port 2 is right motor. And port 3 is left motor. Now you'll notice when I did this, I didn't put a space in there and I capitalized the second word. That is a coding thing. It makes it easier for, for us to double check whether or not we typed something in incorrectly. So uh, get used to that and please type it just like I did there. Okay, VEX 393 it is. We want to switch these two. Okay, so that's good. What else do we have to do? We have to go to our analog sensors, and in number one, we go line faller, number two, potentiometer. Okay, so, line follower, whoops. Okay, and I'll switch the type to line follower. And the second one is potentiometer. And go ahead and select that one. Okay, so we're set up there. Last ones, we want limit switch in digital one, bump switch in digital two, and green is our LED down in digital 12. So, we're going to go limit switch. And this one we can just call digital in. Or, sorry, touch. Touch is the one you want. Um bump switch is our next one we're going to call that one touch as well and then green is our digital 12 and that's the vex led and once you're done with all those tabs you just hit apply and okay and you'll notice these pragma statements are up here now we've got it all basically what we did was we assigned names to everything that's plugged in now and we've told the program hey i've got a motor plugged into port 2 and port 3 and i've got an led and digital 12 so now it knows where everything is. Okay, now I'm going to show you the last little bit before I let you get rolling on your own. Okay, it says power on the cortex. So, okay, on the front here, there's a little, there's a little power switch. So you can just plug that or turn that on. If both lights are flashing green, then you know it's on. Please make sure you have a battery in. A lot of people. Say why isn't uh, they both? Why aren't they both going green? Well, they don't have a blue battery plugged in, so make sure you have that. Okay. Next, it says view the motor and sensor debugger window. So it says go to robot, click compile and download program. All right, and leave the debug window open. So let's do that. Robot, compile and download program. You may hit an error here. If that happens, call me over. I will get it solved very quickly this is our debug window right here we want to keep this open don't click the X uh, you can click start that's fine but don't click the X on it and then it says click robot debug windows and confirm motors has a check mark beside it okay so robot Okay, I'm not re-recording an 8 minute and 40 second video, so uh, I think we've got the majority of it done. Uh, this is basically going to, you know what, I'm going to pause, I'll restart in a second. Okay, so a couple of things good to point out there. Number one, that's why you save. It did tell us to save and I skipped over that, so that's easy to do, but please make sure you're constantly saving with this. Number two, Going back and forth in this program is between a video and the program. Um, it really does take a lot on it. So please be coding on one computer and watching the video on the other. Um, and I will reiterate that in class as well because it does tend to freeze. This is not the greatest program in the world. Um, it is very nice, but it's not the greatest. So as I had said, we want to compile and download. Go ahead and do that again. We leave this up. I'm going to, without switching back and forth, uh, just so I don't freeze up again. Um, you can hit start. It'll tell you to go next to robot, debugger windows. Make sure motors has a check. Make sure sensors has a check. Okay. Um, both of mine do. And what that does is it puts these two tabs here. OK. 
okay? And we also make want to make sure continuous. It's not paused or anything like that. It's on continuous, okay? Um, so that will put these tabs down here, and you'll see right motor and all that, okay? So I'm going to flip back here quick, and it says now basically we've gotten all that stuff done. Um, in the motors tab at the bottom of the window, it wants you to change the right motor value, okay? So it says click port 2 under the power column. Enter several values ranging from negative 127 to 127. Press enter on the keyboard um, every time you type in something new. And then we're going to record our observations. So, once again, not responding. Uh, I'll just show you on the screen. You click under this power window here. Type a number like 20 or 40. Hit enter. Uh, see what it does. Hit 60. 100, 127, just a range of values, then do some negatives, see what the motor does, okay? Um, you're going to have then this Google Doc, it's attached to this assignment, and it says debugger notes. You're going to just go in here, type in what you saw, okay? What actually happened when you typed in those values. When you're done, go ahead and move on. So there's two little things it wants you to do for motors, then moves you on to the analog. Please be reading the directions. Um, I know this is a long video, but you'll start flying through this with the directions in no time. Okay? Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Hopefully this video was helpful.